In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the all new Minisform MDSA 156 dual screen portable monitor. I've done a review on one dual screen in the past and several other portable monitors, mainly because I do use them when I travel. I think they come in really handy. And personally, I've been looking for a good dual screen setup that's not going to break the bank. And I do think that the Minisform MDSA 156 is actually a great option. Basically, what we're getting here are two 15.6 inch 1080p IPS displays running at 60 hertz connected to each other with a hinge right in the middle. This supports HDMI and USB Type-C for video. In fact, this is a full-size HDMI port, and that's something I love seeing because a lot of the portable monitors on the market have the mini or even the micro HDMI, and it is pretty annoying, you know, trying to find an adapter or carrying that exact cable around with you when you're traveling. It's coming in at 2.2 pounds at its thickest spot, it's 0.95 inches thin, and it is constructed of aluminum. So the whole outer shell is aluminum. I was actually under the impression that this would be plastic, but it's really nice to see that we've got a pretty premium metal shell on this thing. We also get some extra accessories here, like a six foot full size HDMI cable, USB type C cable for video in, USB type C cable for power in, and a 30 watt PSU. The hinge on this monitor is pretty sturdy. You can basically put it in any orientation. There is a metal kickstand around back, and yeah, I mean, it actually looks really nice. Two 15.6 inch IPS 1080p displays. It's got a vase mounting system around back and we've got this built-in metal kickstand. So a lot of these portable monitors that I've taken a look at come with kind of a folio case that also acts as the stand and those can get really flimsy. But with the hard kickstand extended on this thing, it's not gonna go anywhere. And again, the hinge system here is really sturdy. You can put this in basically any orientation. And in fact, the monitor will do 315 degrees fold out so it'll work like TP mode if you wanted it to. But personally, I usually use this just like it's set up right now. And I've got this connected to one of my Windows mini PCs, just sitting right behind it, and I'm using USB Type-C. This is the first mode, so we've got full extended mode or fill mode. So we can use this as dual screens, basically working as one giant screen. You could also set this up 90 degrees if you want to. But we do have some function buttons over on the side that will allow us to kind of swap this out. Over USB Type-C, we can set this up as dual monitors with a single cable. And from Windows, you can choose which monitor is your first, which monitor is your second. And to do this, we're just gonna press the mode button over here. So we're gonna go out of fill mode and just work as a dual monitor. And again, from within Windows, you can swap the top from the bottom or the bottom to the top. It's really up to you. But over USB Type-C, we do have that option to have basically two monitors connected with a single cable. This is my personal favorite mode. That way I've got two separate screens that I can work with. For example, like I mentioned, I've got a mini PC connected and this little thing is more than capable of running Cyberpunk 2077 down here at 900p. We could also do some work or watch some videos on the top monitor. And again, you could do it vice versa if you wanted to. It's really up to you how you want to set this up. It's also got built-in dual stereo speakers. They're not the loudest, they are a bit tinny, and I've never really run into a portable monitor that had great speakers built in, just because the way they're all set up, but they will get you by. When it comes to the OSD settings, we've got the basics, brightness, contrast, there is a mode setting, color temp, low blue light, there's also an overdrive setting, so you can turn this completely off if you don't want it. Volume, obviously we can mute up to 100%. Language, reset, Bill. We've also got the Mac extended mode. So it is a special mode to work with a MacBook or even an iMac. You will need to enable that. But heading back up to picture, if we go to mode, I'm in standard mode right now. This will allow me to kind of adjust everything on the fly. We've got a few presets here. Game mode, movie mode, reading mode, FPS, and RTS. Personally, I like standard, that way I can adjust the contrast, color, and brightness the way I like. Another way you could set this up is in kind of portrait mode. Now this would be great actually on the desk next to your big monitor, let's say you use a 27 inch. You could have this sitting over the left or the right hand side, discord up if you're doing some coding, even some document editing would work really well in portrait mode. And again, I'm in fill mode right now, so we've just got a big single monitor. But from the Windows settings, you can always go to dual monitors, just like this in portrait mode. But I think that the snap feature in Windows does work out really well if you just want to do fill mode here on this setup. That way, if you've got this connected to your main PC with another monitor, you don't have to worry about three different displays unless you really want to. 
There is one downside going into portrait mode with this thing, and it really comes down to the built-in kickstand. It will hold it up vertically, but we can't tilt it back any with that kickstand. But I'll tell you, my main use case scenario for something like this while traveling is with my handheld gaming PC. Now this will work with the Steam Deck and in desktop mode over there. It's actually really easy to set up three monitors, but I've got the ROG Ally X here. And since we've got a built-in seven inch display on the handheld itself, that's gonna be my third monitor, or the way I've got it set up is my first monitor. But now we're working with three displays here on that handheld. So yeah, you could definitely utilize this with a handheld. If you wanted to do dual screens here, you could uh, single screen, totally disable the screen on the handheld. But this is one of the big reasons I wanted to get my hands on this monitor, because recently when traveling, I don't bring another Windows laptop with me. I usually just carry a handheld, maybe two, depending on what's out. And having an extra display to get some work done comes in really handy on the go. In the past few days, I've been using this quite a bit. We've got two IPS displays here at 1080, 60 hertz, 178 degree viewing angle. Driver-free operation for Windows and even Mac. You will have to enable that Mac Extend from within the settings there. With devices that support power and video over USB Type-C, you can use this in single cable operation mode. So most mini PCs out there are handhelds. That way you don't need a power supply for the unit. But just keep in mind, if you're going to be running this off of a handheld and its battery, it's going to draw from that battery. With a mini PC, we're usually plugged into the wall, so we really don't have to worry about it. 315 degrees of rotation, so you can fold this all the way back and use it in what I call TP mode if you wanted to, but there's several different orientations that you could set this up in, as you can see here from this little image. Lay flat, upright, portrait mode, you could do TP mode if you want to, it's really up to you. Personally, I like what they've done here with this dual screen portable monitor, but there are a few things I'd like to see changed. Now when it comes to the speakers, not something I usually look at with a portable monitor. I know that they're not going to be that loud. I've never been able to test one that has good speakers built in, so I kind of overlook that. You can hear these. They're a bit tinny. They don't get that loud, but yeah, they will get you by. One thing I wish this supported was free sync or just some type of variable refresh rate. We're right there at 60 hertz, and given the fact that I'm going to be using this while traveling with lower powered systems, I'm not going to carry a super powerful PC with me to connect to it. Sometimes with that lower end hardware, you just can't lock it at that 60 FPS mark and you might get some screen tearing. But for the most part, you know, dropping those settings down on the newer handhelds, you can definitely get by without it. It just would have been really nice if it had free sync built in. And another thing I noticed here, which I was kind of under the impression that we could use two different devices on this using a single screen for each. Unfortunately, I don't think the hardware is set up that way. So for instance, you couldn't connect a handheld and a mini PC and get one display for each of those devices. It's only going to work with a single device for dual displays. At least that's the way it's set up right now. I haven't found a way around it. So definitely keep that in mind. But for what we have here, I do think it works really well for a dual screen portable monitor. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links in the description to a Menace Forum's official website. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.